Hello everyone, welcome back to Hackers SAT Math. For today's lesson, we'll be going over the first test in our book, and particularly the no calculator section. Do you guys remember how many questions there were? Total of 20, right? So hopefully we did pretty well, and I'll go over all the questions, and you guys can jot down the particular concepts that you missed, and we'll begin right away, okay? So number one, what are they asking for? So our particular question states, which of the following equations is there at least one real solution for z? So simply put, this is asking for an equation that is solvable algebraically. So what I first did was, oh, since an absolute value expression is something that involves the concept of distance, it can never have a, what value? A negative value. So since we cannot use our calculator for this question, what I did was I transferred everything and simply put the absolute value expression on one side, and I left the other values on the other side, other constant values. So for the First option, I can move my entire absolute value equation to the right-hand side, so it becomes an absolute value of z minus 3 being equal to 3. And then the second part would be the absolute value being a negative value, and we can see right away that this can never make sense. So let's just cross off the second answer choice. And what about the third one? If I move the absolute value to the right-hand side, I can see that the entire expression is equal to a negative 3 value as well, which fundamentally does not make sense. So let's cross off that one as well. And the final part? You leave the absolute value as it is on the left side and you move the numerical value and this also contradicts the concept. Therefore, you circle A and that's our final answer. So another trick or another way we can solve this question is approach this in a graphical manner. So question number one, what does the absolute value of a simple variable, let's say z, what does this look like in the x and y coordinate plane? It's in the shape of a V, right? So if we were to apply a negative sign in front of it, it'll just flip the entire graph going downwards like this. And when we add or subtract values at the end, it'll simply shift the entire graph up or down. And if you wanted to incorporate a value inside of the absolute value, that's when we shift left or right. So you can also approach this once again. Let me just draw out everything on the side here. So the first equation, when we have a negative absolute value of z minus 3, it's taking the va a basic graph of the absolute value, shifting it three units to the right, and then flipping it down like this. That's what the first part looks like. And then at the vi of final end, when you add 3 to it, you're shifting it three units to the upper part. So that's what our graph looks like, and we can see that it does indeed intersect the x-axis twice. So there are solutions to this equation. And for the second answer choice, if I wanted to graph it, it'd be the same as shifting my basic absolute graph to the right three units and then of three units as well. So it will look something like this, and we can see that it never intersects the x-axis. And moving on to the third answer choice of C, we're taking the absolute value of the graph shifting it three units to the right and then flipping it and also as a final step shifting it down three units down does that make sense very good and let's just graph the last part real quick we're taking the absolute value and what happens if we add a three inside of it we're shifting it three units to the left and then up three units and this also does not intersect the x-axis that's why we can further confirm a okay very good Let's do number two. So it's involving a basic algebraic expression and what are they asking for particularly? So we have a general slope intercept form. It's given as mx plus one. And they're telling us that m is a constant. It is a numerical value that does not change. And given as a reference, negative f of negative one is equal to five. How do I transform this into a point form? It's the equivalent version of having negative 1 comma 5, and they're asking for f of 1. So what do I do? Just plug in the given values and see what we can extrapolate based on that. So let's do that first. So plug in negative 1 as our x value and y value having a final expression of 5. And we can simplify the expression putting the variables on one side and moving the constants to the other side so we can see that our conclusion, m 
has a final value of negative 4. So our original linear equation, instead of having the m, let's just substitute what we just found. So it's equivalent to negative 4x plus 1. We can see that a negative 4 slope shifted one unit to the up part, or the along the y-axis, is our original graph. And we just have to take another step. What is our final y value, the output value, if I wanted to substitute x being equal to a positive 1. I can further simplify and conclude without using a calculator that it's negative 3 and use circle D. Okay? So it's a nice and easy warm-up question for the first two. So let's move on to the third question. So we can see that we're involving a polynomial equation and the highest degree applied to the x variable is a 3. So it's actually a cubic function. And they're telling us once again a is a constant and that's what we're particularly interested in. So what do we do? I can see the factor form and the expanded form. So why don't I just simply distribute everything out? You guys can do that. But in this particular question, they're only interested in the coefficient applied to the second degree. So you can just selectively multiply the terms that actually correspond to the second degree. And we can see that a simple value of 2 is all we need. So you circle D and you can finish it very quickly. Okay. Very good. So let's do number four here. Our first word problem suggested as the fourth question. Let's read the question together and see how we need to approach the question and try to pull out the information that we need in a mathematical sense. Okay, first sentence. The total cost, C, that Kimberly pays her mechanic to repair the exhaust system or vehicle is determined solely by the mechanic's hourly rate, R. So this is the amount of money that she pays per hour pace per hour and the number of hours given the variable h so i just circle the two variables that popped up in this question and cost of vp is given for parts for her vehicle which of the following could be used to calculate total cost for the repair so what do you have to do the hourly rate you multiply by the number of hours that person worked and you finally add the material cost and do we have an equation that matches this i think we do so you circle c and we're done okay so number four was a basic question involving concept of rates and expressions and it all ties back to that simple equation of distance rate and time but this question is involving the rate, not in terms of distance, but work. And you have to just replace that variable with work. Okay. So let's move on to number five. We have an expression that involves the radical expression and a factor form. And they're telling us that V is actually equal to 12. So let's just substitute that in real quick and everything being equal to 1. Which of the following lists all of the solutions in a plural form for x? So it seems like, oh, it may have multiple solutions. So I substituted the value that I know. And what is our second step here? We did go over this in our previous lesson. Whenever we're involving radical expressions, you move everything involving that on one side and the rest of it you just push it to the other side so in this particular question i can multiply everything by x or move the x variable to the right hand side and from this particular step we are going to can you guys tell me what we need to do square both sides so we have 12 minus x being equal to an x squared so let's move everything to the right hand side so zero is equal to x squared plus x minus 12, and we can actually factor this into x plus 4, x minus 3. Therefore, I can validly conclude that my x value would either have a negative 4 or a positive 3. So many, many, many students circle the first answer choice, but there is a very particular part that we need to double check. When we were squaring the equation itself, we actually introduced extraneous solutions to it. So we must check if our original question, original form, actually does hold true for these values. So let's just check it real quick. What happens if x were to be a negative 4 value? Does this equation hold true? We can see that the square root of whichever expression we're looking at can never be a negative value. So therefore, the negative 4 version does not fit here. So the positive 3, plug it in. Square root of 9 equal to 3. I think it does work. That's why instead of the answer being A, it's actually C. And then you circle it, and then we're done. 
Okay? So always make sure whenever you're squaring both sides to double check the final answer into the original form. Okay? So let's move on to number six and see what they're asking for. So they present a table, and I think we have one, two, three, four, five values given. F of x are the results that it generates after you plug in the input value. Um, when the function is graphed in the plane, it forms a line. So this one word was the crucial information. So we know that it is not going to be a parabola, rather in a linear trend. That's why all we need to do is involve the general standard formula of a line, which is equivalent to, or the slope intercept form. So what do we do at this point? Just plug in the values and somehow find our B value, A value, and finally look for the difference. So what I first did was I looked at the easy terms. When x is equal to 0, my final output must have a value of 3, so my y intercept pops up real quick as a positive 3. And then when I wanted to find something else, you can use either of these values. So let's just use the positive version. When x is equal to a positive 2, my y value has a negative 3. You move the values to the left-hand side. 2m is negative 6. So I can conclude that my m has a negative 3 value. So let me just erase this real quick. And how do we find, for example, b? You plug in x being equal to 1, let's just put that real quick. Finding b, finding b. When x has a positive 1 value, what does it generate? A value of 0. And what happens when my x has a negative 2 value? Positive 6 plus 3, it's equal to 9. That's why the difference between the two numbers is a negative 9, and that's why you circle a. Okay, so you just apply this step-by-step -step process for linear functions and just solve for the slope, the intercept, and we're done. Very good.